Good evening and welcome to 365 Days of Stories with Theo Mayer, day 56. Multiple of seven, so here we are again, my life as a steward. Um, I wanted to continue with stories from Montana and especially touch on something that took place for me that was nothing I would have ever expected and something that I've I, I, I have a hard time putting into place and, and so I'll just begin with that ranchers or at least the ranch that I was on and Dave Garber and Ron Devork they looked at certain animals and birds as varmints, uh, troublesome animals. And <clears throat> there was one good way to deal with varmints and that was to get rid of them. And in the back of the international pickup that we used to drive around everywhere, there were two guns, two rifles, 22 and a 360. And the 22 was for little stuff, and 360 was for, for bigger, bigger things. And these were always in the back of the truck. Um, they didn't like magpies. And when some of those first days that I was there, they stopped at the pickup. We were driving somewhere, and they asked me to shoot a magpie that was out somewhere. Now, part of it was, I think, trying to get me used to using a gun and testing my aim, which I'd never done before. And so I aimed and fired and ended up killing this beautiful white and black bird, a magpie. Now, remember, I was this guy that loved nature, loved animals, birds, the diversity of nature. I was Teddy the Tamer, the kid that took in animals and nurtured them. And here I suddenly had shot a bird. And I don't know if it was to try to fit in, but I shot quite a few magpies after that. We would stop and I would take aim and fire away. I don't even know, I guess the magpies got into the gardens and ate fruit and, and that kind of thing gardens and orchards. Um, so this was kind of weird. Now, coyotes lived there, mountain lions. Uh, in Montana, coyotes were not coyotes, they were coyotes. And if you called them coyotes, you're obviously not from Montana. Um, it's interesting because if you had sheep, and they were free ranging, you could count on losing a number of them every year to coyotes. That's kind of like growing food and losing a good portion of it to whatever wild critters you've got living around you. And it can be very frustrating. I live in that situation now. I think one of the animals that I like the least right now are gophers. I had a almond tree that I found three days ago. The roots had been completely nibbled away. It wasn't an old tree, but it was old enough. Been in the ground for at least seven years and was about eight feet tall. And I had to yank it up. I'm gonna to have to prune it back drastically and hope that there is some viable root life left on that tree and it will regrow. We'll see what happens. I consider gophers kind of a varmint. And you know, in this day and age, uh, how do you get rid of them? Well, there's electronic devices, perhaps you can use, uh, put them in the ground, solar powered, and they emit some kind of ultrasonic sound that deters the gophers. Biodynamics would tell you that you should capture, kill a number of gophers, skin them out, incinerate them when uh, 
Venus is in Mercury, or Mercury is in Venus, I can't remember which one. And when Mercury, I think it's Mercury, when Mercury is in Venus, you're supposed, to, this doesn't make sense, no, it's when, it's when Venus is in Scorpio. When Venus is in Scorpio, you're supposed to incinerate those skins, and then you're supposed to spread that ash over the land where you don't want the gophers and that supposedly takes care of them interesting okay back to montana coyotes and sheep they don't mix too well there was one time we there was a place in montana it was called the bench and it was a topographical feature uh, that ran the length of the valley where the garber ranch was and there was a steep hillside going up and then it kind of rounded at the top and then off to, I believe it was the north from there. It, it went down in a number of what they called coolies, little valleys. Now on the top of the bench, one day we went up there. Typically we brought salt to both the cattle and the sheep. This mineralized salt that you would buy in bags. There were places around the ranch that you would deposit these bags of mineral salt and the livestock would come up and, and eat the salt and the minerals. So we were going up to do that and we found about 13 sheep that had been killed and not eaten. They were eaten a little bit. Uh, their hind quarters had been eaten, um, just almost not at all. And, you know, so here they were dead. And what Dave told me was that the coyotes will often go off on these just killing sprees where they will, you know, get kind of wild, frenzied, and they'll kill a number of animals and eat little bits of each one, or maybe they'll drag one off into the brush and eat that one completely. So this was not a cool thing. And so coyotes were on that list of varmints. And... Uh, I remember one day I was driving home from visiting a friend of mine. Her name was Bertie Strunk. And I was in the international pickup, so I had the rifles there. And I'm driving along, and here's a coyote standing in the middle of the road. And I quickly got out, and I got the 360 out, which had a scope on it. And I, you put that crosshairs on the animal's chest and fired and dropped that coyote and put it in the back of the truck to take it back to the Garber Ranch because I thought, you know, in a way I'd done a good thing, but there was this great conflict inside that I'd killed again this beautiful animal that probably had had nothing to do with killing the sheep because it was quite a distance away. Ah. <sighs> I look back on this, and I just go, wow, how did I do that? At, at, you know, the thing is that at a certain point, you kind of go, you can just live into that mentality of killing. I ended up shooting deer for the venison. Um, I shot a woodchuck, a porcupine. I can't remember what else, but I tried to shoot one of just about everything. I'd skin it out, check it out really closely. But it was like kind of this strange way of going about observing nature and it didn't feel very good to me. Um, there were a number of experiences though that really, they shifted my perception of killing completely. One uh, was I, this when I was 19, I had bought now at this point a 308 rifle and a friend of mine, um, oh, Tommy, and I can't remember his last name. He and I went out, we were gonna shoot across this one valley towards these uh, woodchucks that would have holes and we we're gonna shoot at them. So here we are shooting them and it was a long distance. We didn't hit any of them, but we're on our way back to uh, the truck that we came there in. And there's a woodchuck out of its hole. And I end up aiming, shooting, it was super close. And I wounded this animal. I didn't kill it. And it went down into its hole. And I could hear it down there whimpering. I 
Look at me, I still have never forgotten about that. It was a horrible, horrible thing. I couldn't get it, couldn't go after it, but here I had really messed up an animal. And it was obviously, obviously gonna die. And I remember those sounds so well. Horrible. Another time, trying to shoot a deer, long ways off, take the shot, and I hit its leg. I watch its leg you know, do like a 180. So I definitely took it out, um, you know, and for a hoofed animal, basically took it out at its elbow. And it was horrible. What was that thing gonna do? It ran off, probably didn't die, but now it's a three-legged deer. And believe me, I'm sure it didn't feel good to that animal to have that happen. And it was much more vulnerable to being prey to something else if it lived at all. That really did me in too. Um, one time Ron went down to butcher a pig or to kill a pig to butcher and cornered two of these pigs in down in the pig sty, pig area. And these you know, he's got the rifle. I'm supposed to be there holding the pigs in place so they can't run away. And these two pigs know exactly what's about to happen. And they're just looking at me directly in the eyes. And they're just like going like, hey, please, please, please don't do this to us. And boom, you know, one of them goes down. The other one goes running off. It's like, but they're looking right into my eyes as this whole thing happened. Kind of reminds me of this story um, about this guru who was about to die and he saw that he was gonna reincarnate as a little pig. And so he went to one of his disciples and said, I'm gonna be reincarnated as a pig. I'm gonna be born to this sow that belongs to so-and-so down the street. And what I want you to do when that sow has all the little piglets, I want you to come down. I'm gonna be a black pig with a little white uh, circle uh, around my my uh, right eye. And so please slit my throat so I don't have to endure the life of the pig. Well, this all takes place. He dies. He reincarnates as this little pig. The disciple goes down to, uh, you know, slit the little piglet's throat. And the guru, who can communicate with his disciple in some way, shape, or form, goes, no, no, no. Don't kill me. Don't kill me. I love my life as a little pig. And this is what's true, I think, is all these animals, they love being what they are. And it's like, how can we be, how, how can we, you know, decide what lives and what doesn't live? It's a, I, I just couldn't, I couldn't shoot anything, you know, after, after I basically shot that woodchuck and heard it whimpering in its hole. It was like, that was it for me. And when I returned to California after that, um, I was a student at Stanford. I'd taken spring quarter off in order to work in Montana. So I worked spring quarter and then through the summer, went back with my freight and I took it out on a boat and threw it in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. I was like, I am not gonna shoot anything ever again. That was my conviction, never did after that. Um, so, <clears throat> I don't know. I just don't know what to think about all that. Uh, it, I think it's, a, you know, we used to butcher chickens and I remember just chopping, I, I was given the job of chopping the chicken heads off with an ax, you know, with a, like a, there was a round of wood there and I put the chicken there and boom, chop the head off and the chicken would run around still with the head off. Ah, these things. You just see that nothing in this world wants to die. They all want to live. We all want to live. And so just, you know, the conflict that still lives inside of me as a result of all that leans me in the direction of not eating meat at all and being a, a, a fervent grower of vegetables and fruits. So this week, interesting what I've brought up, but maybe some food for thought, so to speak. Food for thought. How do we be a good steward? Okay, have a good rest of your day. Thanks for joining.